Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine and surgery and assisted conception at the Homewood University Hospital. And today I'm going to talk to you about a presentation which was then published in Fertility Sterility on the duration of stimulation in IVF. What do we normally believe? We normally believe that the stimulation should be between 10 to 13 days. That is what has been generally been taught. In some cases, we see stimulation being accelerated, which basically means that stimulation occurs by day nine or day 10, you are ready to go for oocyte retrieval. On the other hand, you see stimulation occurring later, and that is going to 15 or 16 or 18 days. Much of them are poor responders or are resistant PCOS. So let's look at the study. A short study, but it gives us some idea into what should be the duration of stimulation. And this was the duration of gonadotropin stimulation is predictive of IVF outcome. This was in October on 31st, 2017. There were three groups, group A, group B and group C. Group A was less than eight days stimulation. Group B was 9 to 11 days stimulation. Group C was greater than 9 and 12 days stimulation. A retrospective analysis. Trigger was administered when the follicles rise reached between 17 to 20. The duration was 9 to 12 days generally. 690 cycles between 2013 and 2016. We calculated days of stimulation before the trigger. And what do we look at? We look at the AMH. We look at the follicle greater than 15 millimeter, number of oocytes, number of mature oocytes, fertilized oocytes, as well as blastocysts available and then the clinical pregnancy rates. Let's look at group A, B and C. And what stands out is group A stands out, which has the minimum duration of stimulation. And what does it tell us? It tells us that the, the AMH in this group was lower, the number of mature oocytes were less, the number of blastocysts were less, the number of oocytes were less. The clinical pregnancy rate was statistically significant and lower than the other two groups. The live birth rate was lower. Where did you see the best outcome? You got the best outcome in group B. In group B, which was 9 to 11 days of stimulation, you saw the highest number of oocytes, highest number of blastocysts, and a live birth rate which was the highest. Group C came closer to it. And again, though this study is a retrospective analysis, it tells us an something different too. It tells us that in some cases of low AMH, there is an accelerated growth, an accelerated recruitment that occurs. And why is that? Again, time and again, those who attend my teaching courses will tell you that AMH is a test that tells you a lot more than just the ovarian reserve. It tells you about what resistance the follicles face. And to break that resistance, you require FSH. The lower the AMH falls, it is possible in some cases that antral follicles are recruited more easily. That inhibitory response being reduced. And in those cases, it may be possible that these follicles are recruited much faster though it does not tell us whether these would be more mature. What we do know is that pregnancy rates seem to be lower. In conclusion, the 9 to 11 days gave the best outcome. Accelerated follicle recruitment may be due to low AMH as we already discussed. That is a much shorter paper to cover, indicating one is how long should be the minimum duration of stimulation, 
and why in some cases that minimum duration of stimulation is not achieved. Thank you very much.